Hey boys, girls, and parents, we miss you. Hope this video finds you well and safe. We have created a virtual lesson for you to finish your koala bear paintings. You have your canvas and supplies. Let's watch and listen to your instructor, Lisa, as she demonstrates the steps to completion. Hey guys, Lisa here. First, I want to start off by saying how much I miss you guys, and I can't wait to get back into the art studio and create with you. Um, today, we're going to take a look at how you can finish your koala bear painting at home so you can have a little bit of fun, and when you get back to the art studio, we can start a brand new project. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so step one, if you haven't done your drawing yet, you're going to take your reference picture, and you're going to take your paper, and you're going to fold it in half. All right, and then in half one more time. And then you can open it back up. And you're gonna do the same thing here, which we've already done in class. And you're gonna open it back up. And then you're gonna draw yourself a koala. And you're going to go box by box. So what you see in this square here is going to go in this one here. All right, guys, remember that the reason for folding it is to help us enlarge your drawing. You want to make sure you draw your koala bear nice and large so that it doesn't look teeny tiny on your canvas. So you're going to look at this first rectangle and the rectangle on your picture and you're going to say to yourself, what's inside that rectangle? And in my case, most of the koala's head is in there. A little bit of the head goes into the next box. So I'm going to do a quick circle to represent the koala's head with a little bit of that circle going into the next door neighbor's box. Okay, and then I'm going to add on the ear, and I'm going to add on the other ear. Alright, and then I'm going to figure out approximately where that nose goes, about halfway down the koala bear's face. Now remember, with our drawing, we only need, you know, the general outline of the koala. We don't need all the little details in the hair, we just kind of need to know where things go, like the eyes, the nose little chin area okay I don't need to worry about all the little hairs that come off of his ear then I'm gonna keep going he's got an arm that comes down and it drops into that box below it and actually extends into the third box wow this arm actually goes in all four boxes so if you look back and you realize your arm only goes in one or two boxes you drew that arm way too small so go back and double check yourself I've got his hand coming around that branch he's holding on to now, which I haven't even drawn the branch yet, but I've got his hand in there. All right, then I'm going to come back here and do a quick sketch of his bottom. That looks like his back leg. Now, here we see that the branch is in the way. I think it's a good time for me to draw that branch. So I'm going to start over here. It kind of comes out of his hand. Look how tall it is. It's the same height as the top of his ear, so I better find the top of my ear and make sure that that branch goes all the way to that same height. All right. And it goes all the way off the bottom of my paper. So make sure yours goes all the way off the bottom of your paper. And then we can see his hand kind of holding on to the top. All right, and then on the other side of the branch here, we can see the rest of his back legs holding on. Man, these koalas, they're really good climbers. They got these long nails that'll hold on to the branch so they don't fall. Grab or draw those. All right, now that's about all I need. I don't need any more detail than that. We're gonna add all the detail when we do our painting. All right, so this is good for step one. All right, guys, I'm gonna real quick go over my drawing with my Sharpie so I can actually see my drawing. You guys be able to see what I did. And remember, if you made any mistakes while you were drawing with your pencil, just don't trace them. They don't need to go onto the canvas. You can just leave them right here on the paper and forget about them. Alright guys, after you have traced your koala bear with your Sharpie marker, you're going to take your piece of tracing paper, you're going to place it over your drawing, take a 
put a little piece of tape if you need to to hold it in place. All right, and then you're gonna take a color marker, doesn't matter what color, and you are going to trace your koala bear. Again, if you made a mistake, remember you don't need to trace all of the lines, just the ones you want to keep. are done, you can flip it over. Um, this is easy to see. And then remember, on the back of your tracing paper, you're going to play that ever favorite game, hide the marker. So you're going to take that special pencil and you are going to cover up all of the marker you just did. All right guys, so after you finish playing hide the marker, you're gonna flip your tracing paper back over and tape it down to your canvas, and you're gonna trace it one more time with a regular pencil, pushing a little bit, with a little bit of pressure, not too hard, you don't wanna put a hole in the canvas. All right, and then every now and then, just double check that it's coming through onto your canvas. When you're all done, voila! You should have a lightly sketched pencil drawing of your koala bear on your canvas, and then you can go ahead and take your Sharpie marker and trace over it for the final time so you can actually see the outline of your koala bear. All right guys, we're up to the fun part, the painting. So let's go over what came home with you in your South Shore Art Center to-go kit. All right, inside your to-go container, take off the lid, don't get rid of that, we need that. All right, you should have three brushes, a big brush, a medium brush, and a small brush, a couple paper towels, and all of the paints that you will need to finish this project. Leave them right in there. Okay, the only thing you want to be able to have at home is maybe some newspaper to put down so you don't get paint where you're painting, and a container for water. Right, you can pretty much use any container you'd like. You could use a disposable container, maybe an old thing of yogurt you're getting rid of. Um, I just grabbed a piece of Tupperware. At the end, I'll wash it out. It'll be clean. Um, this paint will stain your clothes, however, so please be careful. Wear some old clothes you don't care about in case you get a little paint on you. And you guys know from being in the studio, it'll wash right off your hands. No big deal. All right. First thing we're going to do on here is the background. So what color is my background? That's right, it's pretty much green. There's some other colors in there, but we're gonna do a green wash on the background. All right, so we're gonna get started right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the two greens out that I'm gonna use for my background. And I'm gonna leave them on top of my palette in case I need to mix any colors together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my darker green. I'm gonna take my large brush. I'm gonna hold my brush the same way I hold my pencil. And I'm gonna grip it right where the metal meets the wood. All right, so I have some control over my brush. I'm gonna take the brush, I'm gonna dip it into the dark green. Now notice I'm dipping the brush. All right, I'm not scooping like a spoon. And when I take my brush out, the drip, paint's not dripping off of it. I didn't take too much. All right, so just dip your brush into the paint. All right, then holding it just like a pencil and going from left to right, side to side, I'm going to go back and forth on my canvas and 
spread that paint out back and forth. Get some more paint on there. All right, now when I get close to my koala bear, it's okay if I go over my koala bear a tiny bit. Okay, I can still see my Sharpie lines, and when I paint my koala bear, I will make sure that he's got nice, neat edges, but the background is gonna get covered up. So you can actually go right over the edge of your koala bear a tiny, tiny bit. It will actually help with the illusion that your koala bear is in front of your background. All right, I'm gonna go about halfway down my canvas with the dark green. Don't forget about this side over here. All right, and then while my brush is still wet with the dark green paint, I'm not gonna wash it. I'm gonna go right into my lighter green paint, dip that brush right in there, and then I'm going to blend the two greens together while the paint is still wet. It's called wet on wet painting. Okay, so I did not wash my brush. I didn't dry it off. I'm letting the two greens kind of blend together so that my background has two different shades of green in there. Alright, and I'm going to make sure I go all the way to the bottom of my canvas. That's right, you chat out three. You need to do three coats of this type of paint so that we don't see any spots on our canvas and it looks nice and clean and vibrant. Okay, so I'm gonna paint one coat and then I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. As, as soon as that first coat is dry, you can go ahead with your second coat. thing we're going to do is that branch if you have one in your drawing I think pretty much every picture had a branch of some sort so we gave you guys two different shades of brown a dark brown and a light brown you're gonna do your branch pretty much the same way we did the background only instead of going side to side I'm gonna suggest you go in the same direction 
as your branch kind of goes. So mine goes on a diagonal up and down like this. I'm going to do the same thing with my paint and I'm going to brush in this direction. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start with the lighter of the two browns. Same as I did before, hold my brush like a pencil, dab my brush into the paint, and I'm going to kind of just drag my brush up and down, filling in between these little fingers if I have to. Okay, and this is where I can be super careful and get a nice clean edge up against my green background. So I drag my brush nice and slow along that edge so it looks like the branch has a nice clean edge. It doesn't look like a brush. It looks like a hard edge to a branch. Okay, I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing, a nice straight line around my koala bear. If I cover up his nails a little bit, that's okay. I'll paint the nails in last in black paint and you'll really be able to see them. Make sure I go all the way to the bottom. All right, and just like with that background, while my light brown paint is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dark brown paint. And I don't need to clean my brush grab some dark brown and I'm gonna kind of brush it over top of my light brown. Now the cool thing about bark is it has a texture to it. It's rough, it's not smooth. So if your paint looks a little rough and textured, that's okay. All right, if you put a little dark and you don't like it, wait a few minutes, go over it again with the light brown. All right, you're kind of mixing the paint and doing it. These, again, you get to be a little bit of an artist here and decide how you want your branch to look. Maybe you want a dark spot on an edge. You purposely put in some extra dark paint. If you look, I'm kind of dabbing my brush up and down to get that kind of bark texture. I'm gonna go back with some light brown paint and do the same thing. Now I know, I know we say three coats, but if you paint nice and thick, you like the way your branch looks after one or two coats because it looks it's supposed to look textured and rough and not super smooth, then you don't need to do three coats. You could stop after one or two. All right, this is your painting. All right, I'm going to let that dry for a minute and then I might put a little bit more dark brown on there. We'll see. All right, guys, after letting that branch dry a little bit, I'm going to go back in and just touch it up in a few spots. I'm actually going to switch over and use my medium sized brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of dark paint and make my edge a little bit darker. done with your branch. You're going to go ahead and wash those brushes off. Remember, wipe off that extra paint first. Wash it in the water. Dry your brush. Do the same with my big brush. Wipe. Wash. And wipe again to dry it off. Okay, so we just finished cleaning off our brushes, getting all the brown off, and we are ready to start our koala bear. So you're going to go into your paint containers, you're going to grab out your black and your white, and you're going to have to mix up a gray. So remember before I said you were going to need the lid to your container, this is where that comes into play. So you're going to take out your lid, you're going to open up your white and your black, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my large brush. And I'm going to take some of this white and I'm actually going to almost like dump it out onto the container. Not all of it, save some, but you want a nice puddle of white on your container. And then you're going to take just a little bit of black. Remember, black goes a long way, so you're just going to lightly tap your brush into the black. Not scoop, only a little bit at a time. And you're going to add some black to your white and mix. You're going to see that it starts to turn gray. Now, if you want it to be a darker gray, what do you think you have to do? That's right, you have to add a little bit more black. Okay, if you think it got too dark, you can add some more white. 
okay? You want to keep the paint kind of in one puddle. Try not to spread it out too much on your plate. And you want to mix enough that you're going to be able to cover your whole koala bear so that you don't run out and have to remix that same gray. All right, so once you have enough gray to start, I'm going to get a little bit of the extra gray off my brush so it's not too drippy. All right, and I'm going to start. And I'm going to start with the outline of my koala so that this way it really looks like my koala is sitting in front of your green background. So I'm going to hold my brush just like we did before, like a pencil right where the metal meets the wood so that you have control. And I'm going to drag my brush along the outer edge of his ear. When you run out of paint, you can get a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to drag my brush along the top of his head. See how I'm getting these nice clean edges that overlap my background or overlap my branch a little bit. So it looks like the koala is out in front. All right, then you can go ahead and fill in his ear, the top of his head. If you get a little paint over those eyes, don't worry about it. Those eyes and the nose too are both black. So we're gonna be able to paint those on top of your light gray later. And if you remember, we have to do at least three coats. So on your first coat, you might still see some of your Sharpie or you might still see some of the canvas. But once this dries, we'll do another coat. Okay, we're gonna be nice and careful along my edge here, along the green. Okay, and then you just go ahead and you finish filling it in. dry. So you can go ahead and wipe any excess paint off on a paper towel so that your brush is kind of a dry brush. We're going to use a dry brush technique here to get the look of the hairs. So you're going to want some white paint and some black paint. However, you don't want to use the black just as plain black. You want to do a dark gray, much darker than what we have here. So I'm going to actually mix some up ahead of time. I'm still going to start with white. Put a little scoop of white on my palette. Then I'm going to add some black to it. And again, I want it to be a dark gray, so it's okay if you use a little bit more black. We just don't want it to be straight jet black. Alright, so you get a nice dark gray going. 
Okay, and then again, you've got all this excess paint on your brush. I'm gonna take off as much excess paint as I can, give it a little shake on the paper towel, so that again, we've got almost like a dry brush. Okay, and now we are going to add the fur. So if you look at your photograph, the ear fur is a little bit longer than say the furs on his face and his arms and his butt. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to gently tap it into the white paint. So there's only a teeny, teeny bit of white paint on there. And then before I actually touch the canvas with it, I'm actually gonna pat my brush on my palette and get even more of that paint off of my brush. So that there's really just a little bit of paint on the very, very, very tips of the hairs on my brush. Then I'm going to gently, in the direction that I want the hairs to go, pull my brush across the ear. So think about the way that the, the hairs go before you make a brush stroke, right? Think about the fact that the hairs kind of follow the edge of the ear. They don't stick straight up. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go like this. And you can see little hairs start to appear on my koala bear, okay? And again, this is called a dry brush technique because there's not too much paint on your brush. But when you do run out of paint, you can gently tap your brush back into that little bit of paint that you wiped off and go back over it. And you're gonna tap back and forth between white and dark gray. And you're gonna fill in that ear. Okay, and if you get an area like that where it looks a little too dark, okay, you go back in over it with your white and you pull your brush over it again so that it looks like your koala has all these little different shades of gray hairs. Okay, again, you can always fix it. If you don't like if it looks too white or too dark, you just use the opposite color to cover up what you don't like. Okay, so one ear done. Then you can go ahead and do the other ear, switch, switching directions, thinking about which way the hair grows on the koala's ear. Okay, nice long brush strokes because we said the ear hairs are a little longer. When you go to the face, the ear hair, the face hairs and the body hairs are a little bit shorter, so you want much shorter little brush strokes like this. going. And you fill in your whole koala there. So we've now finished all of the little hairs on your koala and the last couple steps are the details that are going to really bring your koala to life. We're going to need his nose, we're going to need his eyes, we're going to need his mouth, we're going to talk about the little claws that come out so you can really hold on to that bark of, on the, the branch and those last finishing touches. So first thing we're going to do is the nose. We're going to start with the black paint and we're going to use your medium sized brush that's in your kit. Okay, so it's a little bit of a rectangle brush. You're gonna, again, hold it like a pencil. 
you're gonna dip your brush right into that black paint and you're gonna very, very carefully outline his nose. You want the edges of his nose to be very smooth. So I'm gonna actually start at the top. I'm gonna drag my brush sideways so I get a nice crisp line like that. And I'm gonna drag it down sideways. And again, I'm overlapping the gray so that we cover up any of those rough edges. And it looks nice and smooth. And once you have the shape of the nose, you can fill it in. If you look at your picture, you'll see that in mine, the top of the nose has a little bit of lighter gray. It's a shine so that his nose looks three-dimensional. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm not gonna clean it, but I'm gonna go back into my palette where I have some gray paint. And I'm gonna kinda just get some gray on my brush. It's okay if the black is still showing. And I'm gonna come back up to the top and I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray at the top and I'm gonna let it blend in with the black paint so it kind of just looks like a shine on the nose. We don't want it to be white, white. We want it to just be a lighter shade so that it looks a little bit like his nose has a shine on it. All right, just like that. Okay, then I'm gonna work on the eyes. So I'm gonna take all that extra paint and kind of just wipe it off my brush, but again, no water. If you add water to your paintbrush right now and it gets wet, you're gonna see drip marks go all down your painting. It's gonna look like the polar bear's crying, so don't do that. I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint, very, very little bit, and I'm gonna put his eyes back in. Uh, let's see, looking at my picture. I'm put one here. You see how slow I'm moving my brush? And I'm dragging along the edges. I'm actually gonna switch to my smallest brush. So if you wanna switch to your smallest brush, have a little bit more control over the shape of the eyes. Start out nice and small so that if you accidentally make them bigger, they don't become gigantic. Okay, and upon... Oh, his eyes look a little uneven. I'm going to fix that. Looking closely at my picture, I can see his eyes are actually brown. So I took back out my brown paint, I dry my brush off of that black, and I'm gonna get some brown paint. And inside those black spots, I'm just gonna put a little circle of brown. Okay, his, his eyes are dark brown, so if the brown mixes with the black a little bit, that's okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit of brown over there, just like that. And then I'm going to wipe all that extra brown paint off my brush. All right, now, I'm going to, while I have my black out, there's one more black thing we need, and those are the little claws that come off his paws and allow him to really hold on to the branch. So I'm going to get a little bit of black paint on my smallest brush. And I'm going to go up here, I'm going to find one little paw, and I'm going to look at my picture and see where that claw comes out. I'm just going to pull a claw. one claw. Let's see another claw over here. Another one here. He's got one coming out of his thumb. Now I can't really see these claws because they're on the other side of the branch. So I can come down to his bottom feet. there. I've got one step left. I'm going to take my medium sized brush. I'm going to wipe all of that black paint off. I'm going to dry my brush till no more black is coming off. So really make sure it's clean. We are about to make a very, very, very light pink. So we don't want black anywhere on that brush. All right. In your kit, you're going to have some red paint. 
you're gonna take your white first. You're gonna scoop some white onto your palette. And then you're gonna take the tiniest bit of red. Can you even see it? Tiny bit of red. And mix it in with your white. You want it to be the lightest pink. Almost to the point that you can barely tell that it's pink. And we're gonna put that little bit of pink right underneath his nose to show that his mouth is there. And if you look at your picture, you might have a little bit of pink fur right under his eyes. Okay, so when you mix up that pink, which again, you can hardly tell it's pink, we're using that dry brush technique that we used on his fur. So before you paint anything, get all the extra paint off your brush. Okay, and then with that dry brush, you're gonna do the same thing as before. You're gonna tap your brush into the paint. And right below his mouth, you're just gonna pull a little bit of pink hairs. You can barely tell that it's pink, to be honest. If you end up just having a little bit of white under there as a highlight, that's fine. I'm just trying to showcase that he's got a little mouth underneath there. And if you wanna do a little highlight around his eye, do that too. All right, Ooh, I just thought one last little detail. If you wanna make it look like his eyes are shining, you're gonna take the back of your brush, not the side with the little bristles, but the back end. You're going to dab it into your white paint so there's a little dot of white paint on your brush. And right in his eyeball, you're gonna put a little white dot. It's called a reflection dot. And there you go, now your koala bear is staring back at you. All right guys, here's your finished koala. Done, ready to hang on the wall as soon as it's dry. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you like the way that your project turned out and I can't wait to create with you guys back at the studio. Come visit us this summer. We have the camps going on, we've got classes going on, and then obviously we'll be back this fall. See you there.